Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning. Welcome today, this second Sunday of Easter of the year 2020. We're coming to you from Grace Lutheran in Visalia. That would be California, if anybody's wondering. And we thank you for receiving us into your home today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Today's first reading comes to us from Acts chapter 5, beginning at verse 29. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed them, Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Theudas appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed. All his followers were dispersed, and it came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. That's the first reading. The second comes to us from the epistle of First Peter, chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you who through him are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. That's the epistle, and now today's gospel from John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. 
Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. From John chapter 20, verses 19 and 20. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. That's the word of our Lord and our title or our theme that grows out of that today. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Today we find the disciples, ten of them at least, locked up in the house, fearful that what Jesus got, suffering and death by crucifixion, might indeed be contagious. They're especially fearful of those who are infected with bitterness and hatred toward Jesus, those who gave him what he got. The commentator, William Barclay, summarizes it like this. He says, It is most likely that the disciples continued to meet in the upper room where the Last Supper had been held, but they met in something very like terror. They knew the envenomed bitterness of the Jews who had compassed the death of Jesus, and they were afraid that their turn would come next. Did you catch that word, compassed? I wasn't sure exactly of that use of the word, and so I looked it up. It means to devise or contrive, often with craft or skill. To put it very simply, to plot. Back to Barclay for just a second. So they were meeting in terror, listening fearfully for every step on the stair and for every knock at the door, lest the emissaries of the Sanhedrin, that is the ruling class, should come and arrest them too. As they sat there, Jesus was suddenly in their midst. Right into where they are at, right into their full-blown fear, Jesus comes and says, Peace be with you. You might know that these words are an everyday Eastern greeting. Peace be with you. In their day and their age and their culture, this meant much more than simply, you, may you be saved from trouble. Rather, it meant, may God give you everything good. And coming from the lips of Jesus, the one who was crucified, dead, buried, the one who is risen, risen indeed, there's a lot of every good thing for God to give them. Remember the Lord's words spoken by Isaiah the prophet? Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. That's the one who walks right through locked doors into the disciples' full-blown fear and says, Peace be with you. And then he gives them a very personal object lesson, a show and tell, so to speak. Hey guys, look, look at these marks, my hands, my side. And you know where I got these marks, right? Some of you saw it happen. I, Jesus, the very one who was crucified, dead, and buried, I now stand before you alive. Peace be with you. That word is good news for all who are locked up in full-blown fear. Peace be with you. Good news, too, for all who don't know exactly what comes next. Peace be with you. Good news for all who must wait, all who must wonder, and all who question, what will life look like in the coming days, in the coming weeks and years? Peace be with you. In other words, I've got this. I've got you. Peace be with you. 
And then Jesus gives them something to think about, something to keep their minds busy while they wait. And we know, don't we, looking back on things, that for them it was 50 days. But you know what? They didn't know it was going to be 50 days. They had to wait. They had to wonder. And they questioned. And a week later, they're still waiting. The doors are still locked. This time, Thomas also is with them. Perhaps the week before, he was all alone, suffering by himself, grieving in isolation. But now, he's back. And Jesus says to him, Go ahead, Thomas, take a look. See what everyone else saw last week. Stretch out your finger and touch my hands. Stretch out your hand and, and reach it into my side. But just like the other disciples, he doesn't need to touch. Like them, he sees and he believes. Peace is now his from his Lord and his God. Jesus, the crucified one, now stands before him alive. And it is he who says to all of them, Peace be with you, even as the Father sent me, so I send you. And then Jesus breathes on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. And now their forgiveness is his forgiveness his forgiveness to give and to share wherever it is that they are sent. Did you catch those words breathed on them? Any thoughts come flooding in from the Old Testament? Just a few weeks back from Ezekiel chapter 37, we heard the reading of the, the valley of dry bones where it said there briefly, O breath, breathe into these that were slain that they may live. And breath entered them, and they came to life. Or how about Genesis chapter 2? God's creation of the very first human being. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Today, Jesus, the life of all the living, the death, of death our foe. He breathes new life into his disciples and sends them out, or apostello in the original language, he sends them out, his apostles, to carry his life to all who need it. Peace be with you, even as the Father sent me, so I send you. Another commentator, Westcott, calls these words of Jesus the, the charter of the church, and he says that means three things. First, it means that Jesus Christ needs the church. Not the church building, but his people who are his church, living members of his body with Christ as the head. Jesus returned to the Father, but guess what? We're still here. Our mouths are here to speak his words. Our feet are here to run his errands. Our hands are here to do his work. Jesus is dependent upon his church. Second, the church needs Jesus. One who is sent needs a sender. One who is sent needs a message to take. One who is sent needs authority to back up the message, one to whom to turn amidst doubt and amidst difficulty. Without Jesus, the church has no message, no power, no one to turn to when up against it. Without Jesus, there's no one to enlighten our minds, no one to strengthen our arms, and no one to encourage our hearts. The church is indeed dependent upon Jesus. And third, the sending out of the church by Jesus is parallel to the sending of Jesus by his Father in heaven. 
As you remember, Jesus was perfectly obedient to his father. Jesus was the instrument in whom his father's love for the world was made known. And as Jesus' messengers in this world, we are his instruments to share his message, not our own message, and not our own will, but his be done. His will carried out in his wisdom and strength with resources that he will provide. Those resources begin and continue through the work of Jesus' words that are literally alive with his spirit, breathed into us on a regular basis. Fortunately, we don't have to be together inside a church building for him to be doing that. Jesus himself says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am with them. But one might say, what about me? I'm here behind locked doors all alone. Is he with me? Great question. Another question, can you hear my voice? If so, there are now two of us, and Jesus is also there. Another might say, well, what if I can't hear your voice? What if I'm reading? Is he with me? Another great question, and I'll ask one more. Remember his promise at baptism? I am with you always. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Baptized into his death and into his resurrection, you are his and he is yours. He's got the marks. He's got the wounds, the scars to prove it. You can't see them and you can't see him. But you do believe and you are blessed. To close out this message, I'd like to share another favorite professor story with you. One day in class, talking about the Lord Jesus and the sacrifice that he made on the cross, his marks and his wounds that he took for us, this professor said, a well-constructed altar will have five marks etched into the top of it. A mark for each of his hands, a mark for his side, and a mark for each of his feet. I'm here to tell you that we at Grace are blessed with a well-constructed altar. With all the pyramids, with all the cloths, with all the coverings, no one can see the marks, but that doesn't mean they're not there. And in the short time that I've been here with you, I have not seen those marks, but they are there. Five marks, crosses etched into the marble, one on each corner of the altar, and then one right there in front at the center. Like I said, I haven't seen them, but I did reach out my hand and feel for them, five of them, hands, feet, and side. Sacrifice complete, crucified, but now alive. And so, peace be with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts, your minds faithful in Christ until life everlasting. Amen. Together we speak the words of our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. At this point in the service, we normally have opportunity to return to the Lord our gifts and tithes and offerings, freely given from his bounty for his work in his world. Opportunity still abounds. We pray. O precious Savior Jesus Christ, there is no work or sacrifice we can do to turn away God's wrath from us. But eternal thanks be to you because through your suffering and death on the cross, you have won full pardon for our sins and established peace with God in our behalf. This peace God announced unmistakably to the whole world when he raised you from the dead. Now, peace and forgiveness will always be ours for you ever live to make intercession for us in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our ever-living Lord, this peace which you brought to us sinners fills our souls with holy joy, for we know that whenever we meet God, we shall stand before him unaccused, uncondemned, and unpunished, and be received into the everlasting joys of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Father, though the reminders of your curse upon sin are still evident, in the thorns, the thistles, and the weeds that plague the ground, in the toil, pain, and death that are so much a part of this life. Nevertheless, fill our hearts with peace, so that these things hold no terror for us. As our Father in Christ Jesus, hear us when we pray, and according to your will, remove the things that distress us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, Holy Spirit, we thank you for giving us faith to receive God's peace through Christ. Cause this peace in Christ to rule our hearts so bountifully that we serve God in all we do and live in peace and love with each other. Broadcast throughout the world the blessed message of pardon and peace in the crucified and risen Christ and continually draw people to him. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Amen. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.
cross again.